How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me again on tea. I'm gonna taste this jambalaya first. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Get the part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew, come here, boy. Mm. You know that looks good? This is going to be good, I guarantee you. Talk to it like it knows what I'm talking about. I like it, it's good. I believe in easy cooking, believe me, I do. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. And today we're gonna cook corned beef and cabbage and some anasasa beans that we get out of Colorado. And they're very good, and I've got to turn the fire on under the, this juice we got to put on it. I think that's the one. Yeah. Turn it on medium so it'll get the hot and we'll put the beans right in there and they'll cook before this shows over, I guarantee. First of all, though, we're gonna cook cabbage. I love cabbage. I love corned beef. I love food, there ain't no two ways about that. <laughs> and you can look at me and tell, I've lost 175, 185,000 pounds in my lifetime going up and down. <laughs> and it's been a lot of fun to do it, but I still like all good food that's cooked well. I'm gonna turn this fire on too. Got the right one. I'm so proud of me for doing that. You'd be surprised. In here, I have corned beef stock. I cooked corned beef that I'm gonna put in this cabbage. The corned beef is already cooked. In this cabbage, we let it cook until I like the way I like it. I don't like, I don't like cabbage that's, uh, that's half cooked, you know, like that the Chinese do, just stir it around a little bit. I like it like those Cajun cook it, cook the hell out of it. That's the way I like it. <laughs> and it tastes better to me like that. I got, I have more flavor in it. And I'm gonna stir this around to be sure it's got, if we have more salt, I'll put it in there. See? It doesn't need any right now. I smell enough salt in there. Now this is cabbage, we cube it. We cube this cabbage. And I cooked the, the, when I cooked the corned beef, what I did, I put four cups of white wine, good Chablis, it's suitable to drink as well as cooked, but never cook with a wine that you won't drink. I put five pounds of, of, of corned beef, four cups of dry white wine, two tablespoonsful of, of soy sauce, two teaspoonsful of Louisiana hot sauce, or a quarter of a teaspoonful of cayenne pepper. And I have two heads of cabbage here, not large heads. Not like one I cooked on a show in, in, uh, in Alaska. The cabbage weighed 65 pounds. Man, I couldn't believe it, but it was one cabbage. And I got two large onions that I, we quartered that in, into, and cut that into quarters. The cabbage had been cut into quarters and then put it on in bite-sized pieces. And the salt, of course, when you're cooking corned beef, you got to watch, you may not need any salt at all, and you may need some. And I'm gonna put this tasting spoon down here and see if this needs any. Because if it does, I'm gonna put it in there. Yeah. <laughs> I think a teaspoonful of salt wouldn't hurt at all because I got a lot of cabbage there. And uh, I think I'd measure a teaspoon in my hand like my mother showed me how to do when I was eight years old. Now that's a teaspoon full of salt. Let me get two more grains. I got it. <laughs> Put that teaspoon full of salt in there to be sure I got just enough salt. Look at that. Now how do I do that? <laughs> practice. <laughs> that's just practice, that's all. And you can do it, anybody can. You just got to have confidence in yourself. I'm going to put this cabbage in there because the water's getting warm. My hands are clean. I washed them yesterday. <laughs> I'll dump that in there when I get enough to where it won't splash. That ca I love cabbage. I eat it raw, eat it cooked, and I will eat it half cooked if it, somebody didn't know to cook it enough. 
And uh, I love corned beef. I love corned beef sandwiches. I love corned beef just by itself in cabbage or cooked with beans. Any, anything I have to cook it in, I love it. And corned beef good for you, they tell me. I found that out after I've been eating it all my life. But, um, I, I believe in them. I swear I do. Now, let's get in there, cabbage, and i got to stir you down. This is going into corned beef stock that I cooked that corned beef in. And uh, I already told you what I put in there. Put that wine and take all the bitterness out of anything that you have. It's bitter. Just take that out of it, and it'll do it. Put that out of my way and stir this into this stock. If I need any more water, I'll put it in here. May need a little more water, I can tell. Come here, onion. Let's put those onion in there. These are good onion, they're good sweet. I love to make onion sandwiches, you know. You ever eat an onion sandwich with mine in? Good for you, too, they tell me. I was listening today about garlic on the television. Shucks, I should be the healthiest man in the world, I'll tell you the truth. I love that garlic. My father said to read me, what invented twin beds was garlic. <laughs> and I can believe that. Got to put a little more water in this. No two ways about that. Let me see how much of that. Uh, that's for the beans. We're going to put them in there in a few minutes. Got to cover this with water. I don't want it to go uncovered. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. Let me get one of these pot holders there in case I want to hold that old pot still while I stir. These are sure handy little deal. They'll keep you from burning yourself, and I don't like to burn myself in it. Now, I'm going to put that corned beef in there in a little bit, but not quite yet. I've got to get this all down in here like it's supposed to be, stirred up. Get some of the onion on the bottom, in the middle and leave some on the top. I love boiled onions. I really do. <laughs> and boiled onion, whew. And that's healthy food. And I'm a healthy man, thank goodness. Little piece of cabbage there. Raw, I love it. All right, cabbage, let's get to cooking. Mm-hmm. Let me go on, beef. Now we slice this. And it makes it easier to serve people. It ain't all easier to cook, too. It cooks better when it's sliced like this. And I like for it to cook well. I feel a story coming on I'll have to tell in a few minutes. But I want to get this on first before I start messing around and losing my train of thought. Ain't got but one train on this track, you know. <laughs> I guarantee that's true. Now, you know, I've got to stir you all down in there, don't you? Yeah, let's go ahead. Stir it down in there. Separate it the best you can. That looks good enough to eat right there, you know. It's done enough. That's for true. Let's stir that a little bit down into that so it'll cook. You know, this, believe it or not, now this just water just covers this. But by the time this is cooked, water will be about a half an inch deep over the top of it. I don't know where it comes from, but it does it. <coughs> now, we're getting right. Now I want y'all to cook real nice. Because I'm going to just put that out where the people can smell it. I'm going to put the lid on that. Excuse me. I got to watch that every now and then because I don't want it to boil over. Now here are those Anastasia beans. We get those out of California. I just barely soaked those in water for just a little bit because they cook real quick. But I said I felt a story coming on, and I do. Now in these beans, I'm not going to put a thing in the world except maybe a little, little of salt because they're going into corned beef stock is what they're going into. In the beans, I put other things into it. 
This corned beef stock, is what we did, we, we took a five pound, five pound uh, corned beef, tablespoon full of onion powder, two teaspoons full of garlic powder, two teaspoons full of Worcester sauce, and cayenne pepper to taste, my taste. <laughs> it, I don't like food that's too hot, though, no. Put that over there out of my way. This corned beef stock we got right here. And I got some beans. Yep, I put the wrong one over there. And what I got to do is put some uh, little stuff in that corned beef stock I got. Cooking in there. Getting hot. Nice and hot. Now, what I'm going to put in that corned beef stock is a little, uh, come here, corned beef stock. Tablespoonful of onion powder. There it is, a nice tablespoonful, you watch. I'd measure that devil tablespoonful. Tablespoon. Not anymore, that's a tablespoonful. And we're gonna put two teaspoons full of garlic powder. And I'm not gonna measure that in my hand. I'm just gonna put it in there, and I can tell you where I've got two teaspoons. There I go. I better measure that and not mess around with it. Two teaspoons of garlic powder. I got to cut that fire down too. One teaspoon. That's a little bit over a teaspoon, but it's not much enough over to make any difference. It'll taste good, that I know. And that's the main idea when you're cooking, to be sure it'll taste good. And I got to turn this fire down to low. There you go. And I'm gonna stir it. Still got a little stuff to put in there now. Don't, don't worry, I'm gonna put two tablespoons full of Worcestershire sauce. Two tablespoons. Two tablespoons? That's right. Two tablespoons. <laughs> now, just put that little bit in, no extra. That's two tablespoons full. And some cayenne pepper to taste. Now, I'm going to use a Louisiana hot sauce made from cayenne pepper. And it's not too hot. It's very, very good. It really is. And I'm there. I, I, I can't, can't go that real hot, hot, hot sauce. I like the flavor. How much you says to my taste? To my taste. That'll be just about right. That's a teaspoonful. <laughs> about all it is. Now I've got these beans. I think I'll tell that story first. I, I, I knew an old man in, in uh, Lafayette had a big bakery over there in uh, Lafayette. And they had the Bustani built a store right across the road from him in Lafayette. It was a straight road in Lafayette, it's hard to find. And uh, his name was Yuval. And Mr. Yuval owned a bakery and a very fine caged gentleman. And I never will forget, I was standing there and they had a, 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 a policeman named, named Guidry. I knew him real well. And uh, they put a, a, a traffic light up there. Mr. Yuval backed out of his bakery in his Cadillac automobile and just ran that red light like, like he didn't even know it was there. And, and of course, Guidry blew his whistle and stopped him, and he knew him. He walked up and said, Mr. Uval, did not you see that red light up there, huh? He said, yeah, but I did not see you, no. <laughs> now, this, this is uh, two cups of these wonderful beans, Anastasio beans. And they, you see how they got color? And they cook a little bit quicker than, than most beans that size. Get in there, boy, don't be messing around. Two of them trying to dodge the draft. Got it. <laughs> and we stir them. Now that I put them in there, I got to bring them to a boil again because I want them to boil real good and cook cook quick. I'll check that for salt later. I will most probably have to put a little salt in those beans. You know how beans are. 
You got to wait till they get most done before you put the salt in there. Now, cabbage. Let's do some cooking. Let's turn that fire up a little bit too. Let's get with it here now. Yep. That's as high as I want it to. That's good enough. Taste this for salt now, but I'm not gonna put any right now. This is my tasting spoon. I used it already, can't use it again. That's bad. Huh. I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyhow. That's not gonna need any salt. <clears throat> just right with everything. Cook, boys, that's just the cooking. See what I got in here. Oh, I know what I got in there. <laughs> I feel like I wanna tell you another story. I'm gonna tell you this story. It happened down in Kaplan, Louisiana at a meeting that they were having, some kids were having a meeting there, put a nice side meeting. And they were doing World War twice. And uh, excuse me, I got hay fever. At the meeting, somebody said, you know, them German done overran Abbeville. One of them jumped up and said, well, oh no, not Abbeville, Louisiana, no. Abbeville, France, they done overrun it, took it. It has fallen to the Germans. And that is a shame. And then five or four more said, ah, I feel so bad about that. One of them said, not me. How come you don't feel bad about that? He said, I don't care about them Frenchmen over there. They never should have left Louisiana and gone over there in the first place. <laughs> now, uh, Beans are cooking. I'm fixing to go sit down and eat very shortly too, I hope. And I've got one story I want to tell you. I very rarely tell this story. It was told to me when I was in the hospital, and I cast from my head down, and I didn't feel like laughing, but I laughed so much they had to give me an extra shot of dope. That's how much I thought about it. <laughs> it's about a little boy who was about seven or six year old, and he'd been to school and he had to walk to school back there in those days. When he got home, his mama was not out in the backyard. She was over the black uh, wash pots that we had back there in those days. So he went into the house and he said, Mama, calling for his mama all the time. Oh, mama, where you at, mama? She said, Henri, his name was Henri Henry. Brought yourself in here. She said, Mama, you in the bed, you sick? Oh, no, Henri. I just had a fine baby, baby boy, and he's gonna be a fine young man like you. Come look at him. And he walked over there, and she turned the cover back and said, you see, that's, that's your little brother, Henri. Ooh, where'd you get him, mama, huh? Oh, she said, I found him out there in the woods in a hollow stump. In the woods in a hollow stump, mama, that's right. In the woods in a hollow stump. Mama, you reckon if I went out there in them woods and looked around a little bit, I might find me a baby in one of them hollow stumps? She, she said, I, I reckon you would. Go ahead, Henri. She wanted to get rid of him anyhow. So out in them woods, he went. He looked in every hollow stump that he came to. And he looked in it, and all of them, but he didn't find no baby. He was just about to give up, and he saw one more hollow stump. And he went over there and looked, and there was a great big, fat, white albino possum. He said, I done found me a baby, I guarantee. He reached down, got that possum, put it up to his chest, and started to run back home, petting it, loving it, petting that possum, that baby he's got. You a fine baby. Everybody gonna be jealous of me to have a baby like this, I guarantee. Ooh, my mama baby ain't as cute as you. Oh, man, wait till she sees you. She, she gonna be mad, yeah. But he got home, did not get home yet. He was just running along. And he met a man, and just as he met that man, that possum grabbed hold of him in his chest. And I mean, that possum held on to his chest. And he was crying. He was got a man, and the man said, Henri, what you got? He said, you don't, you don't need a, you don't need a half eye to tell what I got. 
I got a, a baby. Are you like my baby? Oh, it's a fine baby. You say, that's a baby? That's my fine baby, I guarantee you. <laughs> what you gonna do with him, Henri? He say, I'm gonna wean him if he ever turns loose. <laughs> Now you see that water coming in there like that? It'll do it. Cooking good. Mm-hmm. Throw them beans, too. They cooking good. They don't need a thing except to finish cooking, and I'm gonna eat some of them. I'll tell you that for true. I love them. You know, a man sent me some of those just as a gift once, and we've been ordering them ever since. We like them very much. Like them very, very much and I'll eat them every chance I get. Now, let me see what this is in here. I'm going to let you see. Mm-hmm. See, magnifique, magnifique, I guarantee. Hmm. I'm going to go over here and sit down, and if I think of another story, I may tell you that. I'm going to pour me a little wine in that glass. That's what it's there for, and I don't want to make anybody mad to put it there. So I'll pour me a little bit in there. I, I love a good red wine. Now, with well, this, what I'm eating here, they said practically darn near a veg vegetarian dinner. You use any kind of wine, white or red, purple or blue, it don't mean to do. The chicken and, and fish supposed to use white. I just don't like white wine as much as I do red wine. Well, Paul, oh, just a little swiller. That's a half a swallow. Oh, that's a swallow. Got it. <laughs> Put this. That's to keep the arrows out of there. Now, I'll tell you, this story I haven't told in a long time, but I love this story because I know it didn't happen. It's not a true story like I usually tell. This story is about a, a rebel soldier in the war between the states. And he was in prison. And he was a talkative man. He couldn't help but talk. Wasn't anything he could do about it. He just had to talk about something all the time. So he hauled over and he talked and talked and talked. And every time he got a chance, he'd tell them Yankee guards, us rebels beat the hell out of you Yankees at Chickamauga, I guarantee. He didn't tell them that once a day. He told them that at least a hundred times a day. Man, us rebels beat the hell out of you Yankees at Chickamauga, I guarantee. And they, they got to where they, they put him in solitary. As soon as he came out, he'd say, I guarantee us rebels beat the hell out of you Yankees at Chickamauga. Oh, boy. And finally, they just, it was making the morale in the whole camp go down. So they called him into the, the commandant's office. They said, look, we'll give you $5,000 if you quit talking about the rebels beating the Yankees at Chickamauga, now I don't want the five thousand dollars. In fact, we'll give you ten thousand. I don't want no ten thousand. We'll make you a sergeant too. You make me a sergeant. I always wanted to be a sergeant because he was a private buck. Always wanted to be a sergeant. I guarantee. But well, we'll make you a sergeant and give you ten thousand dollars if you quit talking about the rebels beating the Yankees at Chickamauga. I'll take the job and the money. Well, he said, I'll tell you right now, we appreciate that. So he went out there and he did real good for most a week. And something was happening, I don't know what caused him to do this. He was standing around there and all of a sudden he said, you know something? Them rebels showed it beat the hell out of us Yankees at Chickamauga. <laughs> Let me talk about it. Mmm, that's good. That is good, those beans. Mmm-hmm. Beans are good. Cooked. That's cooked in that good stock made from corned beef. Take a little sip of that wine to help it go down to everybody. That was a swiller, half a swallow. Come here, cabbage. Don't be trying to get away from me. You're not going to do it. Mm. Now I got you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And corn beef. Ooh, 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 boy.
Man. Good stuff. Another swiddle. I tell you right now, I don't know how I do it, except I know my mama taught me. And I sure appreciate that fact. Me share. For more information and a complete line of fine Justin Wilson products, visit www.justinwilson.com or you may call 228-207-5379. Mesha, that's the Justin Wilson fine products. Justinwilson.com That is good.